What I like about the Model 206, it's only a couple hundred bucks, but it comes with incredible features like sights, a trigger, grips, a hammer, and it shoots bullets, all for the low price of $250 or something. Okay, that wasn't great, but that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. I'm not upset at it. The Rock Island Armory M206 is like the Billy Baldwin to the Colt Detective Special's Alec Baldwin. Although, unlike the Baldwin brothers, it's hard to say which one has shot more people. Every now and then, as much as I hate it, I try to review a gun for you guys that doesn't have a comma in the price tag. So, pours rejoice. Today is one of those days. Break out your Newports or your Long Cut or whatever mint flavor tobacco you people are using right now. Pop a bush light and buckle up because today we're talking about a cheap-ass 38 caliber revolver from Rock Island Armory. I've got your features and specs first, and my review after that. So about a year ago, Rock Island invites me to go out to Vegas whenever they launch the all-metal Glock clone, the STK-100. I actually think I took them by surprise because I distinctly requested a Model 206 revolver to go to the range along with John McClain, their pro shooter and spokesman, who's looking pretty good considering Die Hard came out like 40 years ago. No, there will not be a time where John McClain of Rock Island Armory is on TFB TV and I don't mention Die Hard, just not gonna happen, and I don't think that's unreasonable. Truth be told, I was intrigued by the 206 because I'd seen some reviews, I'd seen some recommendations for this revolver as like a good, inexpensive option for concealed carry and for personal defense, and the price was definitely right at $259 MSRP. I asked John to give me the breakdown of the revolver, and of course, he was more than willing to give me the details with a vengeance. I've heard you're not a super fan of cheap guns. Nope. Luckily, I don't have a cheap gun here. What I have is an affordable gun. This is the M206. This is a 38 special uh, detective style stub nose revolver. Um, MSRP is 259 for this firearm. So it's something, again, that we, you know, we talked about before with Martin Twasson really making his firearms affordable so that anyone has the opportunity to defend themselves. And, and this is one of the flagships that, I mean, this is probably one of the best sellers that's out there, mostly because of the price. I mean, okay. this is a gun um, that, you, you can buy and have in your glove box, have in your tackle box when you're out fishing or anything like that, and it's there in case you need it. Like I said, it's not a cheap gun, it's just a very affordable gun that is uh, easy to maintain, easy to shoot, it, it, it's impressive. Convince me that there aren't corners being cut at that price point. Like how can you guys do something, make it affordable, and yet make it good? Uh, so that comes down to the fact that, again, the, these firearms are manufactured over in the Philippines. So for us, the cost to manufacture the firearm is so much lower than if we had to manufacture it here over in, in the U.S. Uh, so one of the other things that we're able to do as far as cutting down costs for our firearms is that we actually have our own foundry. So we're able to actually make the metal ourselves in-house and then go from there directly over and start manufacturing and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's, you know, like I said, we're, we're just a company that, that we're, we're really trying to make sure we can control as much of it as we can instead of having to rely on, on outside sources to come in. Right, so. so you guys manufacture this gun start to finish. There's no third party work or anything. And Correct. that probably has something to do with the price, I would imagine. Yep, absolutely. Because we, we don't have to, to get it from someone else means we don't have to pay someone else. And uh, right. we're able to manufacture the firearm from start to finish. Because it, the cost, is down for us over in the Philippines, we're able to transfer all those savings over here into the US market. I mean, even, you gotta consider that, like we manufacture the gun and then we have to pay to have it shipped over the seas to get mm -hmm. here. And even then we can still be at the price point that we are. Sure. Um, so that's just, that just says how much uh, we're able to save as far as the manufacturing of the firearm over in the Philippines. I could charge you more for it, but the CEO doesn't want that. <laughs> how long have you guys been making these? So the M206 has been in manufacturing for about 20 years. Uh -huh. for the the same way, like have you guys been doing it the same way the whole time or you change anything over the years? Uh, if anything that we've changed, it's just that we've gotten better machines. Mm -hmm. So we're able to, to manufacture uh, maybe a few more and maybe even improve some of the, the, the quality because we got a higher end machine to manufacture it. Consider the history of the revolver and how long it's been around. And the fact that 
not much has changed about it. You know, you can change certain accessories, but the gun as a whole is still there. Mm -hmm. I mean, if anything, I would love to know that something I did is going to survive 100 years from now and people will still be like, yep, John McClane made that, not the diehard guy, the shooter <laughs> guy, you know? Um, and, and that's the kind of legacy that the revolver has in the firearms industry. The M206 is a six-shot 38 Special Revolver made in the Philippines. The Philippines isn't quite Switzerland, but viewers are often surprised to find out that the Philippines has a sizable manufacturing scene. Thus, it's possible to get inexpensive, but rudimentarily decent firearms, and the M206 is a great example of this. It's one of the more popular models from Rock Island Armory, as John McClain just said, mainly because it has that $259 MSRP, but it's got a robust build and surprisingly good fit and finish, although there are some grind marks visible upon close inspection. The parkerizing looks handsome, clean, even, although it's starting to wear off on some edges and wear parts. Oh, and side note, it's California compliant, weird enough. As with most revolvers, the single action is a lightish four pounds with no motion other than the snap of the hammer releasing. However, another surprise this gun has is that I've felt worse double action triggers on more expensive revolvers in the past. Yeah, it's a relatively heavy 11 to 12 pounds, but that's typical for this style of double action revolver and some see it as a safety of sorts, so I guess it kind of might be considered to some as a feature and not a bug. But both double action and single action are surprisingly smooth in this gun. Nothing nearly on the level of a Mannerin MR73, for example, but then again, you could buy like 15 of these for the price of one MR73. Now, other reviews I've read have praised the trigger, but the finish gets mixed reviews. Now, I think the matte parkerizing makes this gun look like a rugged tool, and I personally think it's much better than the like half-ass glossy bluing that you see on other cheap revolvers. I kind of like the thing. It's got like an old school detective revolver vibe, especially with like the throwback retro checkered wood grips it has. With a height of just four inches and an overall length of 6.7 inches, it's two dimensionally smaller than a Glock 43X, so the size is right for concealed carry when you're snooping around the back alleys looking for clues. However, it weighs in at 25 hefty ounces, so whether you're using the M206 to crack a case or to get the manager to crack open the register at the local 7-Eleven, it's a little on the heavy side. Downside, it'll make your jacket sag. Upside, it doubles as a melee weapon, a doorstop, or a weight to keep your napkin from blowing away when you're fine dining at the Pensacola Beach Hooters patio. It uses a single piece 2.1 inch barrel pinned to the frame with a fixed front sight and a simple but sturdy squared off ejector rod shroud. I like the controls on the 206 with the hammer and the cylinder release, both featuring broad stepped ledges that make manipulation easier than pissing outside. While we're on that, the Colt style release straight up sucks. Not on the 206 in particular, I'm just talking generally, it sucks. The Smith & Wesson push forward and the Ruger push in are both superior to the Colt push back. But at this point, if Colt changed it, I think everyone would notice this as an admission of defeat, so it's not gonna go anywhere anytime soon. But look at that ejection, really. I keep getting impressed time and time again with it. The 206 does it fine for what it is. The cylinder drops freely and it spins like a roller blade, and there's no grit or binding in any of the 206's functions. Honestly, if you handed this revolver to Stevie Wonder, he'd probably wonder if this gun costs twice as much as it actually does. That's because there's actually a fair deal of hand fitting with the 206 at the Philippines factory, and it shows. So what do I personally think about the 206? Well, it's a heavy chunk of steel, and it's kind of disappointing that it's 38 Special only, not 357 Magnum, like the also inexpensive EAA Vindicator that I reviewed a couple of years ago. And in fact, this gun doesn't specifically say it's plus P rated on the gun or in the manual, and this is for you to do at your own effing risk, but people who've shot this gun with plus P say it's just fine, again, at your own risk. Speaking of shooting this gun, how does the 206 shoot? Dude, the trigger's not that bad, and yeah. I think that accuracy's all right, but these blacked out, like all black sights, you can't see a goddamn thing. The heavy chunk of steel part 
pays dividends here because it's very, very tame with 38s, and it would actually make a great purse gun for moms coming up on Sunday, May 8, 2022. That's right, Mother's Day is May 8, you animals. I'm trying to help you out with not only your gun purchases, but your lives. Now, on the other hand, the old school vibe it has, it sure is aesthetically pleasing for most of us, but you're paying for that with your hand meat. It's got a very thin, slim grip with a short back strap and a flat grip tang, meaning that when you shoot it, you definitely get popped a little bit, like, I don't know, maybe like you're trying to control a tiny explosion with a piece of steel and wood in your hands. The wood grips do you no favors, and they aren't very forgiving, like my mother-in-law. Now, I've heard that Colt Detective Special or D-Frame grips will work on this gun if you want to change the grips out, although it's not like a perfect, perfect fit. But I found a thread on Reddit where somebody had done this before, and I thought that was pretty interesting. The sights are also kind of terrible, but I mean, that's just the standard these days with just about any 38 Special pocket gun. I mean, I feel like 38 snub noses have always had shitty sights, but without any good reason for it, it can't be that much more expensive to just put a decent front sight on these things, or at least maybe paint the front sight blade white or orange but shooting standard black sights on a standard black like b27 silhouette target forget about it you're not going to see shit between the sights being small and with no contrast whatsoever black sights shooting a black target i know it's a 38 it's not a precision instrument I get it, but at the same time, I can legitimately tell you that I definitely would have shot this handgun better and with better groups if I could see the effing front sight, no question in my mind. If you're looking for a budget 357 Magnum, although I generally hated the Windicator, Vindicator, whatever the hell from EAA, I guess it would do the trick. It's cheap for sure, but for 38 specials, I think the 206 is the best cheap gun out here. Although the Vindicator is German-made, it doesn't really feel like a German-made gun. It feels kind of crappy, and I think that I was told that the company that manufactures the Vindicator actually makes starting guns, like for track races, swim meets, office pranks. That makes sense because it kind of felt like not a real gun, and I wasn't really impressed with it, especially with its relatively awful trigger pull. The 206, on the other hand, just feels better. A better trigger, smoother manipulation, no grinding, no binding, and I think the Parkerized coating just looks cooler, like it might hold up better than the glossy bluing from the Vindicator and other cheap revolvers. Sure, it has shortcomings, we all do. We're not perfect, neither's the 206. Crappy grip, crappy sights, but both of those can be fixed. And in the grand scheme of things, this is a $250 or less revolver that works as well as guns that cost significantly more. Imperfect as it may be, the gun has it where it counts, and this ain't clickbait. I really think this is the best cheap 38 revolver out there right now. By the way, now that I'm done with this gun, do you guys want it? Because I'll give it to you. Just get on subscribestar.com slash TFBTV or utreon slash C slash TFBTV. The links are below, so don't write that shit down. But we give away four guns a month on Patreon. I'm sorry, we don't do Patreon anymore. Utreon and Subscribestar. Only Utreon and Subscribestar. We give away four guns a month and we give away a fifth gun to our $25 tier supporters. I will be giving away this M206 from this video to one lucky $25 supporter. We only have $125 supporters on Utreon and 100 on Subscribestar. We're totally full on Subscribestar. Utreon, there are a few slots left, but we give away one gun a month only to the $25 tier and four guns a month to everybody else, including the $25 tier. So help us out and sign up, but I'm just glad you're watching. Thanks as usual to Ventura Munitions. They sent the ammo we used in this video. If you want one of these and you don't win it, check out Top Gun Supply. They may have it, they may not have it, but they've got plenty of 38 Special Revolvers and Tom Allen, the owner of Top Gun Supply, is a major revolver nerd. So if you need your revolver fix, go check them out. But thanks again, take care.